Hello everyone and welcome to the Spoil Marker and Partners YouTube channel. My name is Mitchell Parsonage and today I'm going to talk to you about a Revit plugin designed by Dairoots called TableGen. I will leave a link below to the download section of their website if you like the tool and want to grab it for yourself. If you would like to know how to download and install in a bit more detail, you can check out the first video in this series called One Filter, which goes into a little more detail on that process. Let's get started with TableGen. TableGen allows you to import Excel tables to Revit as drafting, legend, and schedule views. You can import Excel charts to Revit. You can bring the images in your Excel tables into Revit. And you can also keep your views automatically synchronized with your Excel file. It is compatible at the moment from Revit 2017 all the way through to Revit 2022. Once installed, it will appear in your Die Roots tab and you can click on Table Gen. The first thing that I want to show you here is that if I go and add a table immediately without setting up my Excel file, I just want to show you what the outcome of that will be. So if I go and select an Excel file and I want to bring that in, notice that I will get a a message that says please select valid region and I've got this worksheet region over here which is currently blank so this is the thing that I need to uh, really sort out to make this table gen tool work so I'm going to close that down and I'm going to go to that excel file and open that up I've got a very basic excel file here just a couple of parameters that I exported from my Revit project and I'm going to show you how to set up these regions. Uh, I've got two Excel files here and I'll do slightly different ones for both of them. And you can split this up in any way that you want to, of course. Make sure that your worksheet is named correctly and is easily identifiable for you in Revit. The first thing that I'm going to do is I need to highlight the cells that I would like to include in this region. So I want to include all of this information to start with. So I'm gonna start here in the top left hand corner and I'm just going to click and drag all the cells that I would like to include in this region. Once all of them are highlighted, I'm gonna to come to the top left hand cell over here and I'm gonna give it a name. For now, I will call it information, press enter. And of course, it's important to save that Excel file and I will close that down. If I come back to my Revit project now and I click on table gen, Firstly, once again, this is a modal window, so I can double click on the word table gen to collapse it and I can actually interact with my model in the background while table gen is open. Double click to bring it back. So I will select on add tables. I'm going to go to my Excel file source over here and I'm gonna click on ducks. In this case, notice that the information automatically fills itself out. My worksheet is ducks, my worksheet region is information and now I get to decide whether I want to bring it in as a legend a schedule or a drafting view and if I wanted to have for example one of each I could actually change the number of copies here to three say okay and then I can modify that information here so I want to bring in ducks and information for all of them but the view types I want to change and then I've got a view name here as well that I can adjust but I will just leave it like that for now and I will click apply after a short while, I'll get a message saying that the change is applied successfully and I can close my table gen down. If I now go and look at my drafting view, I'll start there and go to Ducks03. I get that information that comes through exactly as it appears in Excel with the colors as well. If I go to my schedules, I have got my schedule view of exactly the same information. And then finally, if I go to my legends, I have got the legend view of exactly the same information. And notice how it brings through the information as individual pieces of text, which I can manipulate in any way that I want. I can delete the information. And I've also got all of these filled regions that I can adjust and edit as well if I so choose. Let's go through a couple things that you can do inside of the table gen tool before we jump back to Excel and have a look at some more features. You've got batch actions up here at the top. So those three pieces of information that I've loaded in exist here in my interface. And if I hit this drop down, I've got update views, duplicate views, absolute versus relative path, open files, open folders, as well as delete views. So these actions are only applied to the information that I have checked. If I wanted to update the views, I would tick that option 
update views and the views would update. And I'll show you that in just a second. But before I get to that, let's talk about duplicate views because that's really easy as well. So if I wanna take my drafting view here and I wanna duplicate it, for example, I can just select it, duplicate views, and there we go, it duplicates all of the information. And I can do that as many times as I want. I can rename it, I can click apply, and I can give myself an additional drafting view. So I'm not gonna do that for now. To delete, I can tick it, delete views, yes. If I actually want to know what that table or what that view type is referencing, what file it's referencing, I can tick it and I can actually say open files and it will go straight back to my original Excel file and it'll open it up for me. Same sort of thing if I want to just see where the folder is, I can also do an open folders and it will do the same thing. Instead of opening the individual file, it will open the folder location. I can also change it to an absolute versus a relative path. So a relative path defines the position of a linked uh, file in a working directory, like a project folder, for example. An absolute path defines the location of a linked file on your disk or on a network drive. So that's the difference there. So let's talk about updating views. So what I'm going to do is close this down and I will go to one of my views. Let's deal with the legend view, for example. I can notice straight away that I have no borders around these cells. So everything looks like it's kind of just free floating here at the moment. So I'm gonna go back to my original Excel file and I'll make some modifications. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is simply select everything and I just wanna give everything a border. And I can also choose to rename this information. Maybe I just want to take that out, for example, and I just want to neaten this up a bit. So I can come in here, remove all of this text, and I will just center that information as well. Once I'm happy with the results, I can save. Back to my Revit model, open table gen. Make sure that everything is ticked or just the ones that I want to be ticked. I want all of them to be updated in this case. I'll tick all of them, update views and I will click apply. After a short while, I will get changes applied successfully and I can close it down and I can see that information has come through into my Revit document over here. And if I have a look at my schedules as well as my legends and my drafting views, I will see that everything has updated successfully. So that is how I can make modifications to my Excel file and actually bring them through into my Revit project. I can find multiple worksheet regions in the same Excel file. So I'll go back and I will go to Ducks 2 Excel file over here, which I have defined no regions at this point. So perhaps I want to exclude something from this. I would like to create two drafting views. Perhaps one does not include the diameter and the description, but the other one includes all of the information, for example. And I just highlight the regions that I want to work with. So I can start with everything up until comments and I will call this for example partial and then I can create a new region including that initial region that I created so I can overlap them so I'll create another region over here which includes everything and I will just call that for example complete save that excel file back to table gen and I will go and add those tables so let's say the number of copies is two excel file is ducks two and notice how my worksheet region now has two options. So I'll create two copies so that I can apply one to each. Say, okay, I want one as partial, one complete. I'll have two legend views there and I will say apply. After a short while, I'll get the changes applied successfully. I can close my table gen down to my legend section, go to ducks two. Notice that that is my partial one, which does not include uh, the cost as well as the, the, the description. If I go to table three, I will get, uh, sorry, the diameter as well as the description. So I can split my worksheet regions up as I see fit. I could make modifications to this existing Excel file to neaten up all of my text. What I can do here is I can also change the colors of my cells. As an example, if I wanted those to be represented as green rather than yellow, I can make that change. What I can also do is bring charts into my Revit project. If I go back to my original ducks list over here, insert a chart here based on pretty much nothing, but I just want to get the chart in here so you can see how this works. Now remember, I do still have a region defined here. If I just drag my chart here, 
I could of course create a new Excel file, define a new region, whatever the case is, drag my chart over the initially defined region that I have, and I'm gonna save my Excel file. If I go back to table gen, and I update those three, which came from the original Excel file, I'll see changes applied successfully. I can close down table gen and I can see that I have my chart here, which I can just grab, move off to the side and do whatever it is that I want to do with that information. If I want to make an adjustment to that chart, again, I can just go back to my original Excel file, make the modifications required, bring that back in to my Revit project. One last thing that I wanna mention here is that you do have an auto sync function admittedly i have not used this but i have used a similar function in other apps before you can put this on if you want to and what it's basically going to do is every time your Revit starts up it's going to auto sync your excel tables if you have small excel files and a minimal amount inserted into your Revit project i think this is pretty safe to do if you have a large amount of data what i've found with other apps so i don't know if this is true for diaries but with other apps it tends to increase your startup time if it's looking for these files and trying to update them automatically as your Revit starts and again i think if your information is small and your data is not too significant then this tool could work very well but if you do have large amounts of information it might slow down your startup time of Revit. That is everything that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. See you in the next one.